did not yet see, but he believed. Hope. In closing, it's my hope, it's our hope, that we, as his legacy, as we wayfind and we navigate today's challenges, and we help our patients, our peers, to navigate today's challenges, we can look to our king and queen with these gifts to guide us as a star compass or a mental construct, just as Papa Mao provided the star compass for navigation. And the innovation that Dr. Todd Allen will share will continue through us, the innovation that rises from adapting and navigating through obstacles and change. And when we drift off course, like King Kamehameha IV, we find ways, the stars, to orient us, to orient our canoe, to align back to our sun, to keep learning with humility and be alert so we can encounter new landmarks, new shapes of the reef, metaphorically, that the knowledge can be translated to others who may travel that same road we're traveling today in the future, and we can continue to walk in the footsteps of our founders, honoring his gifts and upholding Alexander Liho Liho, King Kamehameha IV, and Queen Emma's legacy to provide in perpetuity quality health care for Native Hawaiians and all people of Hawaii. Kavama mua, kavama hope. Future is found in the past. Mahalo. Mahalo, Kawi, for that moving mo'olelo about our king. At this time, I would like to call up our senior vice president and chief quality officer, Dr. Todd Allen. Thanks, Damien um, and Cowie. Thanks. I feel I could just offer an amen and sit down. Uh, and I wanted to, to uh, give a mahalo to the choir and the performers, the faculty uh, from uh, from yeah from St. Andrews. Just just lovely. Thank you so much. Well, um, I really am humbled to stand here today. I think the birthday of the King uh, is a special day. It's a sacred day. We began this morning, as Cowie said, at Mount Ala, uh, where we offered prayer and words and song and ho'okupu, ho'okupu, excuse me. As someone who's new, you know, still to this land, this, this aina, I feel adic- inadequate here, as I've said to many of you, and especially following Cowie. Uh, there's so much I still need to learn uh, and do to be worthy of this gift, this legacy we've been given. But I'm thankful, and I feel honored to try. And the invitation to speak today has caused me to learn, uh, to think, and to struggle a bit with with my own thoughts. So to Dr. Green, Jill, thank you. Janai, thank you. Dr. Lim, thank you. Um, Where's Dr. Andrade and Dr. Akaka? Thanks for this opportunity um, to all the members of the Native Hawaiian team, wherever you are. Say a little pule for me that I don't mess it up. Uh, We'll give it a shot. I was reminded today, sitting up at Mauna Ola, of my first day on campus, not quite a member of this team. It was July 5th, 2020. I was dropped off. I had to kind of spirit away from Utah in those early days of the pandemic, and I got, you know, when I landed here, all the airports were deserted. The hotel was deserted. I got, had to take a cab up here uh, to the circle in front of the Art Ushijima building, and Nona Irvine met me. And she walked me uh, first into the lobby of the hospital and placed me before the portraits of the king and the queen. I caught my breath a little. I I remember that distinctly, kind of a a gasp. I didn't yet recognize the mana, uh, or didn't know yet to call it mana. Well, three years have passed, um, and as you know, I have the daily pleasure of working with Linda and the team in the Center for Quality um, and Patient Safety here at Queens. I love, truly love, my colleagues uh, and the amazing compassion and intelligence they bring to the job every day. In the center, we try to use the science of process improvement, as Cowie mentioned, alongside the science of medicine to help our teams deliver personalized, compassionate care that is highly reliable and perfectly safe. 
I have been asked, in truth, and not infrequently, whether quality improvement remains relevant in this post-pandemic era and the age of increasing computerization. My response is yes. It is, and in fact, more, more than ever. The theory and the methods are the tools that allow, Cowie used the word, I'll speak more of it, innovation to take place, and more on that in just a moment. You should know that I think the king truly was, as Cowie said, an innovator at heart. When I think of the king as an innovator, just like Cowie, I go back to that seminal quote around the founding of this place. And uh, Janai mentioned it this morning, uh, Cowie read it. I'll, I'll just feature a couple of words because it is amazing and I've thought a lot about it over the past couple of days with respect to this and the work that we're doing. All other jobs fall into insignificance, into insignificance when compared with the decrease in the population, to paraphrase. It's our first duty, he called it, our first duty. Um, all the acts, all of our other acts are in vain unless we can stay, and it's so poetic, that wasting hand of death that was besieging these islands and his people. He called it his responsibility as Kuliana, but he, leaked, he pointed directly to us in the very next part of the sentence and said it's one in which we must all share. In thinking about that and thinking about you and the people um, who can't be here today because they're across these grounds uh, and across the seas in places like Molokai General and North Hawaii Community Hospital and at West, I'm so grateful to you, my friends and colleagues from Queens, who have taught me and my family the crystalline importance of those words that the king uttered all those years ago. So back to my point. I do think there's four imperatives to continue this work in the process of quality and safety that make it more important for health care for us today in 2024 than it ever was. The first is the scientific imperative. It's through those methods that we're able to learn and discover things that we would otherwise miss and we can pass those learnings on to the next patient. We have an obligation not only to the patients who sit right in front of us, but to the patients who are yet to sit in front of us. The second imperative is the economic imperative. One third of all Americans, if you can imagine, ration their medicines every day in order to make those medicines go longer. Process improvement helps us be more efficient, and then it's on up to us to pass those savings back to the community who needs it. The third imperative is the social imperative. I believe with all my heart, I hope it comes across in what I say and do, that these methods bind us together it's the way that we take care of each other. It brings pride and joy back into the work. Most importantly, the fourth imperative is the ethical imperative. I think it's in improvement science where the four core ethical axioms that are native to medicine, autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice live and live quite plainly. I'm quite sure the young king had those imperatives and those ethical axioms in mind as he and his wife walked those streets to help build this campus. His cumulative decisions and acts to establish Mana Mana were impressively, as Cowie said, innovative. His willingness to stop the process of annexation was courageously in, uh, innovative. And I know he would have cheered loudly last week or last month at the opening of the Akahi Center um, he would be proud that we are following in his example. I think for him and for me, innovation was defined ra rather simply. It's not that fancy gadget, the thing that doesn't exist. It's finding ways, a methodology to do the things we know to be right better with better outcomes. Um, but as Janai reminded us this morning, the king did not stop with the theory or a definition of innovation. He recognized with sharp, sharp pragmatism pragmatism that results absolutely mattered. Our acts are in vain, he said. I know the king loved a lot of things, as I read a little bit about him over the past uh, couple of, of weeks. Uh, I don't know what it's like to be a royal person. Um, I imagine it must have been very difficult at times. And, you know, Cowie described in his youth, and I hope even in his later years, he was able to enjoy the beauty of this place and the beauty of the activities that we get to participate uh, in every day. That said, to me, it's loud and clear that he loved his people the most. His favorite activity was to think about 
and love his people. The health and the welfare of the Hawaiian people were the very core, I think, of his service as a king, and that's, again, where we come in. I think innovation is born when love, empathy, meets curiosity. And so that's our first job that I would say today, to love our people, the people that we work with, as he loved his people, and to be curious about how we make their lives better and the lives of our patients better. The next part of the legacy of the king and the queen is now ours as well. Using the principles, um, I had to say it, of high reliability, our founders expect us to deliver. Um, it was Dr. Andrade who reminded us yesterday that three years of the 10-year goal have passed to decrease by half the life expectancy for Native Hawaiians. We had better get busy. So let's imagine a Queen's Health System built on the actions and the words of the King in which the people of Hawaii receive all the right care, but only the right care, delivered free from injury at the lowest necessary cost, coordinated along the full continuum of care under each patient's full knowledge and control with grace, elegance, equity, and empathy. To me, that defines the shared responsibility he, he had in mind. Mahalo for allowing me this time with you today. Uh, thank you for setting such an example for me and my colleagues. Thank you for allowing us to be in your lives and to help where we are able. Thank you. Hula Awana called Eli Ue. This famous song honors Queen Eli Ue Kalani, the last reigning monarch of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Our campus is situated right next to Queen Eli Ue Kalani's residence, Washington Place. She regularly attended the Hawaiian service at the Cathedral of St. Andrew and grew close to the nuns and students of St. Andrew's Priory. After her death, the students of St. Andrew's Priory were included as a part of the procession for Queen Eli Ue Kalani's funeral. This song honors the close relationship that our school has with the Queen. Oh, 
Kavailele o Nu'uanu. Our school lies within the Ahupua'a or land division of Nu'uanu. This song honors our Aina and gives us a sense of place and respect for the land. When the composer Jay Koka was a student at Kamehameha Schools, his father would drive him from Ka'oho, currently known as Lanikai, to Honolulu via Nu'uanu Valley. In 1978, the year his father passed away, Jay wrote this haunting melody and poetic lyrics as a tribute to his father's words. Look to the left and know that it would always be there with you.
of St. Andrews, we thank you for the opportunity to share our story and talents with you. Until next time, mahalo and kulia ikanu'u. Can we please get another round of applause for some <laughs> I would like to send especially my deepest mahalo to Nakumu Keao Costa, Bo Souza, and Kailihiva Van Darvo for the wonderful work that they've done. Again, a round of applause. <clears throat> to be able to have hula and mele at our events like this just makes it so much more bright. And for me, it makes me just stand in awe of how amazing our founders were. ELNU School, St. Andrew's Priory, and the Queen's Health Systems were all created by our founders. How amazing is that? Another round of applause. <clears throat> to close us today, I would like to invite our president and CEO, Jill Hogard Green, to please come and share some words with us. such talented, talented students that are with us. And you give us great joy in the sharing of your, your wonderful creativity, your wonderful music. You also help us be very clear about when we think about what King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma said to us, we must create and support every individual, healthy mamas, healthy babies, healthy keikis, we need to assure that they have the support and health throughout their lifespan. And as we look at you, it is our kuleana to be partnering with you to make sure that we fulfill that goal. As you can live with us and be with us for probably another maybe 80 years, maybe, maybe 90, 
because you have such talent and what we need within our communities. As an organization at Queens, we know we have a aspirational goal to absolutely focus on improving the health and well-being of Native Hawaiians and all others, but particularly for Native Hawaiians because we can see the disparity in life expectancy by almost eight years. So over this last couple of years, we've been focused very hard on improving our quality, our accessibility, and assuring that we are understanding our cultures, listening to the people we serve, and then creating care with them from birth to death. I so appreciated your, your presentation, Howie and Todd, today. As you described our king and what he did in his 29 years, it's just, it, it inspires. We can do so much more. When we think about he was an innovator, you are all innovators. We're in this very important time in our history. Um, as I shared up at Mana Ala, you're serving a dramatic number of people right now. If we looked at the last six months and said how many people have been seen by in our clinics, in our ED, in our hospital, and had visits. We've had over 600,000 visits in six months. And that's just the start. So as we think about going forward, to me this is an inspiring day as we look to our future. We have the ability to work together to create the processes that assure that we have clinicians that can support our mamas and assure we have healthy babies. Today in our state, we don't have a good healthy, uh, healthy life expectancy for our infants. We have too many that are not surviving infancy. So it's a high priority for us. We have to assure that our primary care providers, that means our primary care providers and our geriatricians and our pediatricians and our maternal health specialists and, and OBs need to have the support for us, from us, to build the systems of care that are culturally sensitive and meet the needs of our community. We have tremendous clinicians in all of our areas, and particularly here in our hospitals, there's no question. When you look at our emergency departments and our, our hospitals, you deliver extraordinary care. But we understand today our pressures are the number of people that, that are coming and the needs to make sure that we create and expand access. So what I can share on behalf of our board, on behalf of myself as the CEO and all of the executive team, we're all focused on how do we improve access? How do we assure that we not only take care of everyone today, but we build the ways to better prevent unnecessary disease, to ensure that we're providing culturally sensitive care from birth, and to ensure that we're supporting our keiki as, and giving them the opportunities to be here on the islands. We have another major challenge, which is mental health. And throughout our community, many, many, and particularly our keiki, particularly individuals that are 11 through 25, we're seeing far too many that are committing suicide. We are an organization that serves the majority of individuals with mental health within our hospitals. We're going to strive even harder to partner with our primary care providers to be able to meet the needs and address mental health issues early in life and support us throughout our lives so that we have the support and don't need to have hospitalization because we know that we have people that care and can help us develop. I know with the talent I've already seen, as we thought we talked about COVID many times, you're an incredibly talented group of people of 8,500. We have environmental service technicians that keep us safe and are cleaning our rooms to, so our patients are safe. We have tremendous physicians and nurses. We have technicians and pharmacists. We have a whole team of dedicated people. Our jobs for this next year are to continue the work, making sure that we're providing the safest, most compassionate care. We have to focus on how we build our, and remain sustainable as we go forward. And most importantly, we got to focus on our people, our caregivers, and make sure that they are staying whole 
and that we're addressing if they have any burnout. And we've got to assure that we're addressing our community and making sure that they have the needs they, that we're meeting their needs. The work that's happening in Native Hawaiian Health is the work that needs to happen with all of our patients in all of our community. So I am so grateful for the leadership of Dr. Nalina Andrade, for the Native Hawaiian Health Team, because they're teaching us to listen, to go to the community and ask and understand what the needs are. They're creating culturally sensitive ways for us to move forward. And I can see the innovation in our work. So I today, while well, I can share, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of headwinds. We've had harder headwinds the last couple of years, and you broke through those headwinds and actually created something that was so much better than anyone else in the country. I believe we are at that point as well. We have the ability to transform healthcare. We have the ability to make it safer, higher quality, and affordable. And together, while we're addressing and being culturally sensitive, together, we're gonna to be able to achieve our goal. And our goal, even though Todd reminded us three years have already gone by, we've done a lot of work in three years. But we have, I think we have less than seven to a, a reach the goal where we actually start to see the increase in life expectancy of lives well lived. We want to see the increase in infant mortality in terms of improving infant mortality. We need to see the increase in those chronic diseases going down or later in life and us being able to provide the right support. When we see those measures, we'll know we're able to move this forward in a way that our, all of our communities can have a healthy life. I want to finish with both a thank you to our governors. Um, our governor is actually, when you look at many of the needs we have right now, there are far too many people that are homeless. And the recent discussions at the legislature about addressing homelessness is one of the major factors that we need to be supporting because we are serving those individuals and many times the needs are so great we need to have the support from the state to make sure that we that they have the resources that they need and most importantly it's you it's your creativity i am seeing every day innovations i am seeing every day great suggestions of ways that we can improve so I am grateful. I'm grateful for our trustees. We'll have at Heritage Day time to think about all of our work that we've done over the last decade. But we have a trustee, chair of our board right now, that has taken us through many, many journeys over this last 10 years. And she, with resiliently, resiliency, has said, what's most important is our patients and our people, our caregivers. So how do we assure that we do the right thing so that we can improve everyone's health? So today, I want you leaving with the sense of joy that you shared with us in terms of your, both your song, your energy, and for me, the view of what the future can be. And I want to thank you for the great work you're doing every day and know that it is known, it is seen, and it will make a difference in the lives of the people we serve. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Jill, for your words and to all of you for being with us here today. We're going to close today. I'm going to call Native Hawaiian Health to come join us as we uh, finish uh, by singing Hawaii Aloha. So if Native Hawaiian Health could please come and if everyone in the audience could please stand up, please.
Aloha, everyone. That concludes our service. Mahalo for being with us. Aloha, my kapo. Another round of applause for our speakers, Kawio Nalani Bishizaki, Dr. Todd Allen, Janai Wong, Dr. Whitney Lim, and our president and CEO, Dr. Jill Hogar Green. Mahalo Nui for your inspiring messages of hope. And also Kuleana. And another round of applause for our beautiful Ohana from the St. Andrews School. Uh, Tuna Kumu, uh, Keao Costa, Bo Souza, and Ka Ilihiva Von Darvo. Mahalo.